Hello and welcome back to Kickback Garage. Now, uh, this winter is uh, all too short because we found out we've got loads of stuff to do. I have a complete TV 175 that's going to come in here that I'm going to put together. So if there's anything you wonder about um, when it comes to restoring uh, scooters and uh, mounting them back together, then uh, give me a shout on the old comments, Phil, and I can uh, concentrate on, on the stuff that you uh, want me to concentrate on, basically. <laughs> But uh, as you see, we, uh, we're taking Turin apart here, and that is because my uh, steering bearings are on their way out. And this scooter was uh, originally put together by my friend uh, Swain. Uh, I think it was about 12 years ago or something like that, so it's, it's fed pretty well. But the, the bearings need changing, and as you see, he painted the um, chrome ring there, and that really affects my OCDs, so we're going to change that as well. So I bought new bearings, new bearing cups. Uh, this is also supposed to be chrome. I got hold of a new one there from uh, Rimini Lambretta that's on its way. So uh, the job in hand at the moment is we're going to take off the whole leg shield because my um, wiring loom has got really stiff and dodgy so I'm going to swap out the wiring loom and I'm going to change out all the cables because they started to look uh, really bad from where the outer cables at least so um, that's sort of like the winter spruce I would really really love to be able to get it over on the workbench but I'm waiting for one part an eight pound part to the BSA so I can finish that and get that out of the way but um, it wasn't to be I don't think it's going to get here before Christmas I'm going to give you a little bit of a wobbly cam walk around the, the scooter of what I've got planned uh, I'm going to do the next couple of weeks with this. And uh, later in the video, I'm going to show you how to remove uh, bearing cups in the frame of uh, this Series 2 here. So that could be interesting. And then in the video after that one again, I'm going to show you how to mount new bearings. Is that a plan? That's a plan. Is that a plan, Sven? That's a plan. That's a plan. Okay, come on, I'll take you for a walk around. So as you see, Sebastian here is taking off the uh, leg shields, and that's because I've started to develop quite a bit of rust underneath on the struts there, so I, I want to uh, I want to clean all these down and get rid of it. And he hasn't used, uh, he's used normal black screws, as we call them, under here, so I'm going to change all that to uh, uh, shining stainless i bought the full uh, leg shield series 2 leg shield kit and the rubbers are perished as well so it does vibrate quite a bit and some of these screws are actually loose so but after 10 years that's uh, nothing to complain about we've got this one here i hate it when they paint it and to me really to tell you the truth um when you paint these to me it means that uh, you haven't changed the bearing races so these are probably 60 years old so they, it could do with a renewal there it's starting to get a bit bit notchy and as you can see <coughs> oh you sound up as you can see the uh the outer cables here are are getting really worn so they need changing and i'm not sure what the wiring loom is used it's got some like odd bits and pieces here which uh, i'm not too keen on and i had to use i've just put this red wire here from uh from the regulator to uh, the SIP Speedo, which is starting to wear through a bit here at the headset. Uh, the nice thing about the MB Developments wiring loom that I've just bought, the simplified one, is that it's got an extra extra wire in there for stuff like the the SIP Speedo on that. So all this is going to go away. Um, we ha I have taken off the Castronic, Veritronic uh, ignition because I'm going to fit uh, the new SIP vape which I've got I had to machine down the flywheel so that it fits on uh, the Casa case here because you've got a, a little edge here that, a little groove here on these uh, Casa cases so up, up until now only the Variatronic has fit on this uh, what else we're going to do the um, this isn't too bad my silent block on the other side, it's its normal for the kickstart 
uh, silent block mount to, to go first. So that's it's two, they're two years old, but I don't know. Normally they last a little bit longer. So I'm gonna actually gonna give uh, the BGM uh, silent blocks a bit of a try. I'm gonna take out my uh, lovely, lovely oil tech. Uh, petrol tank because I think to tell you the truth I think I want to fit a mid-range petrol tank and refit my toolbox because I miss that on the rallies to tell you the truth and the other thing is with the uh, with the mid-range toolbox which I think they hold about 11 litres I've got that on the series one now the, the nice the good thing about that is it's more than enough for when I'm going on rallies because after about 100 120 kilometers my my bum tends to hurt quite a bit so it, I'm really happy for the stop so with this one I could probably ride about 250 kilometers that's just not happening with this old body uh, so I have to make some sort of system at the back here to fit the new uh, vape electronic ignition kit uh, this one is loose so I bought some new screws and some washers for that because there's a lot of rattling going on here now so I really, really want to sort this out uh, double time before the uh, TV 175 comes for restoration. So this is the beautiful uh, vape electronic ignition kit. The instructions aren't very clear. They normally aren't from SIP, which is a bit of a, a bit of a shame, really. Uh, this is the variable electronic kit, and. I'm not quite sure what to set it up at about 2,000 revs. I think 24 is what I'm going to aim for, but I'll sp I'm not going to cry over spilt milk. I'm going to sort that out when uh, when I get there after I've changed the silent blocks and put the engine back in again. Now this is the flywheel on this. It's uh, absolutely beautiful, but as you can see, I had to turn down this edge here so that it fit my Casa performance engine block. So otherwise, that should be uh, should be hunky dory. Right, as you can see, we have taken off the uh, fucking 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 fuck. Mm -hmm. Right, we've removed the leg shields, and that's basically so we can get under the struts and uh, paint those. All these cables are absolutely shagged. The main uh, wires are really brittle because they're, they're old. But I think he's probably used an Indian uh, something or other, eBay special. I've got some extra stuff here, I'm not sure what it is. And what we're gonna do now is, I think, because um, I'm gonna change all these cables anyway, I think we're just gonna clip through the cables, except for the hydraulic cable. So if, uh, if Shrek cuts those, I'm gonna have to... Oh, I thought take off the hydraulics uh, from the wheel I reckon right now I need to now I've taken off all the cables and everything and I understand why I haven't changed that even though it uh, really did my OCDs no good whatsoever I started to, started to realize why I didn't uh, change that comb ring earlier because it's quite a lot of work. You have to, everything, all the cables, everything have to be uh, taken away. So this is a special tool. Uh, I think these in particular, to tell you the truth, I think this is uh, MB Development. And it's slotted on one side there, it's a little bit thinner. So that one fits in here, like so, and gives you room to be able to release this one. Now this is going to be a bit exciting. Let's see if I can... Uh... Well, if I... Which way am I supposed to be doing it? That's the thing. It's always like that, isn't it? All right, all right, it's loose. <laughs> it was loose, so that wasn't much of a problem. So that was probably about time. So you've got a screw and you should have a washer with a little tap on it. Yep, and the tap's okay. But I've actually got a new one of these somewhere. I'm going to try and find it in the stainless. On the Series 1, you haven't got this, uh, this groove here. And you can see that the tap sits in there. So that when you tighten this again, 
uh, you don't spin both the nuts together. So if you take that one and that, this should be the, ooh, I think I need both hands. So if I take those wreck and put them in my special box. Now this is the this is the top seat for the bearings. Give me a cloth, please, Mr. Sweat. I've got one yet. And it just looks like a simple knot, but it's actually it's actually uh, what the bearings sit in on the top uh, for the preload. Now these the original ones these tend to break or you get damaged so I'll be changing this top ring here it actually looks okay but I mean I've gone I've come that this far now there's no point uh, trying to keep uh, 60 year old parts doesn't look too bad but I, I think I'll change that anyway and you've got the little bearing that sits at the top now hopefully we should be able to, if we give it a bit of a tap, Oi. there you go, <laughs> didn't even need a bit of a tap. Alright, so we're on the wobbly cam a uh, bit here. Now the chrome ring, in the chrome ring, if you've got the chrome ring type, then this is where the bearing race sits, in the top of the, in the top of the chrome ring here. And it's, uh, it's really quite worn. But he is definitely, you can see, he is definitely, uh, not had this out before it's uh, it's well and truly stuck in there with paint so gonna have to use a bit of force to get it out and uh, he's even painted the grub screw That thing was well and truly jammed. It's painted solid. So that's the grub screw out, that's good. That's good news. And now we need to remove, I think we'll remove the bottom cup first. What's going on? The bearing. The bearing. The bearing. The bearing doesn't look too bad actually. It might have changed the bearings, but it's certainly not changed the uh, changed the races. Uh, and what, I, what you need now basically is a long rod. I think we should be all right there. Right. So the secret here is uh, you just need a long rod of some sort, which you uh, thread down the frame. Hmm. I need, I just need to make sure it hits the side there. So if I hold, if I hold it like that, and give it a bit of a whack. Oh, stop doing it. And what I do is uh, I alternate it, like, so that I'm not hitting the same place. Oh, it's not sitting there. It's not sitting there. I think actually I have to take off, do it the other way around. Take off this one first. It's moving, it's moving. So I have to put it to the side as well. That didn't work too well. So uh, now we've got old Shrek applying some uh, heat. It shouldn't be uh, stuck if it's liquid and I've cut a bit of square bar this time so I can get 
hopefully get a little bit more purchase on the inside there so we'll give that a go normally they just go come straight out with that bar that I used but the problem here is obviously it's all been painted stuck together so it's uh, it's proving to be a right pain in the bum right gents welcome back to the carnage that was a pain a serious pain I had to uh, we had to heat it really really hot and then give it a couple of hits and we said we saw that it was starting to move and then it's cold in the garage of course so then we had to um, heat it up again and give it a couple of hits so I've been at this for about an hour and uh, Shrek's gone in for some dinner and uh, watching all TV it's uh, quite late at night actually so uh, yeah I understand him it's okay he's done it he's a good lad he's done a good job he uh, he took off the leg shields himself, he's never done that before, so... Anyway, stop talking Rob, stop talking and showing. So what I ended up having to do with the, the uh, chrome ring is, because I bought a new one, it doesn't really matter, but if you can see, there maybe, you can see, at least you can see the split on the inside, on the outside there. What I did was I took the old Dremel and uh, just weakened it a little bit, and because the Dremel warms this up, then I could drift it out with the bar that I had uh, quite easily once it was all heated up and uh, had that little split in there. I was thinking about doing the same here, but I've been drifting and what heating, drifting and heating, and this uh, I cut this off. The old dust uh, what's her face, and I've actually been uh, having to drift it off from the outside. I've never ever done that before. All of them, none of them, have been as hard to get off as this. Now if I can find that tool of mine, we should be able to get to the point of uh, being able to take that bugger out. Where is my tool? Thank you very much. Hmm. Why is it never find tools that I've just had in my hand? Where are you? So what I've been doing now at the end, because I just can't, I just can't get enough purchase on the end, end of the uh, bearing uh, race here, from the inside. So I've been doing the old uh, hitting it from the outside. So I, I cut this off, like I said, and I'm just giving it a bit of a tap. So it's we're right at the end of the, right at the end of the action here. Yeah? So it should. Be. Oh, nice one. Oh, hallelujah! 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 I think the problem, problem with that one was um, it's got quite a chamfer on the inside there. It's almost like got a chamfer on the wrong side of the chamfer, if you get with my drift. So there's, I didn't get enough room or enough, uh, enough shelf here to get some purchase on the top to be able to hit it out from the bottom. But as soon as I started moving it out there, I started uh, whacking it from the outside, just alternating my sides. And I could see it was like, sort of wobbling its way out there. So yeah, that's good. And uh, this, this seat is absolutely shot. So that's, that's probably why my, my uh, steering was a bit notchy. And so remember, uh, when you're restoring scooters, do not, oh, do not, please don't paint your uh, bearing braces and uh, chrome chrome rings to your frame because it just makes my life terrible. So before I fit this again, which will be the next video by the way, if I get my parts it might even be before uh, New Year's. So what I'm going to do is uh, take the Dremel with the little, uh, what's it called? Oh Jesus Christ Superstar, I need more whiskey. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take the Dremel with the little sandpaper wheel on it and uh, just give that a, a clean up on the inside there and clean it up on the top there before I fit the new ones and we're not exactly finished yet uh, the next job oh, uh, probably not the next job is I'm gonna bring uh, the fork in a little bit here is you can see it there that's the bearing race the lower bearing race now to get this off the easiest way I find is if you use a decent chisel and just price it up on the bottom there. So we'll give that a go now and uh, hopefully 
I can uh, be finished and tidy up and uh, have some sweets with the kids in front of the TV. Like normal families do. So what I've got going here is the old chisel. And this is normally the best way of doing it. You just like put it at the bottom of the race there. Uh, it's moving all right already. This is not going to be hard. And then as soon as it starts moving, you want to start on another, the opposite side. There we go. And then I try and knock it up sort of in the cross formation. There we go. That was actually pretty easy to get off. <laughs> Which makes a, sh makes a change for sure. Now there's really, really no point. when If you're going to restore a scooter, it's good uh, practice to change not just the bearings, but change the races as well. Because I mean, by the time, but if you're going to restore one now, it could be a whole 60 years old. So these bearings have lasted, not, maybe not the bearings, I think they've been changed. But um, these bearing races at least, They've lasted 60 years. Good quality, eh? There you go, that's it. She's off. Perfect. Uh, one thing to watch now is if you're gonna order, you come to this stage and I'll put you up here. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> so just be aware when you ordering new uh, bearing races and bearings that series ones and early early series twos their bearing race is a little bit shorter so thank you very much for watching and scorn as we say in Norway mm. oh that I just love that if you want to bribe me send me a bottle of that um I like to say I'm really pleased with the way the channel is going and uh, thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for doing the old uh, follow, subscribe. Uh, I really, really uh, wish you a very happy Christmas and I hope you have a prosperous and good uh, new year and I'll see you in the new years. Okay lads, I'll see you later.